Welcome to the Inner Athlete Podcast, where we discuss all things youth athlete development and youth mentoring. All right, welcome back to the Inner Athlete Podcast. Uh, we've got Tom here, Tom Eldred, um, who happens to be an EP, actually, yep. uh, with the good old guys at Kiza. That's me, mate. Um, if you just want to kind of like talk about what you do as an EP um, and how you got into the industry and yeah, just kind of tell you a little bit about yourself. Cool, awesome. Uh, well, first of all, thanks for having me here, mate. Uh, it's good. Uh, yeah, so I've been an EP now for coming up to five years in July. Um, so I went down the exercise sports science route. Uh, it was something that I was really interested in, um, just being involved in some form of exercise and using some form of uh, knowledge to help people who would benefit from it um, and didn't want to do an office job. So that's kind of where that came from. Then I was doing my exercise science and I'm like, oh, I kind of had this thought of I want to help people who really need some knowledge and don't have it and so i heard about exercise physiology and i'm like well that kind of sounds what i'd like when um, was this uh so i was in oh god man uh, this is crazy like the time flies by but uh probably like 2016 i graduated and so i was doing my placements i did one at a similar place to here uh, so it was like a youth development place. And I really actually enjoyed that aspect of because they weren't like your athlete athletes. They were kids who were trying to, you know, improve some form of their sporting activity. And so they didn't really know much. So the value of what your skills and knowledge had was actually amplified. And so I was like, well, that's kind of cool. I enjoyed that. But I didn't really, the sports side of thing just never really interested me that much. So um, I remember there was like a night and there was an info night about EP. I'm like, oh, that's cool. So I went down and just shadowed one day. There was a clinic at Deakin. So I went to Deakin um, and they had a, a like an EP clinic where the students would do placement. Uh, so I spent a day there and I saw some of the clients they saw. So uh, like they were like more elderly, um, people with different health conditions. And I saw the work. I'm like, well, I could do this. Like I find there's value from that um, and, I, and I'd really enjoy it. Um, so went down that path, applied for it and got it and then got accepted. So that was 2017, finished in 2018, um, halfway through. Uh, and then ever since then, yeah, I've been working at Keys as an EP. Um, so for those who don't know what an EP is, uh, essentially we work with uh, clientele that have more longstanding health conditions. So when I first started, it was like chronic health conditions, but I kind of don't like that uh, language of chronic. Like it's true but it is kind of that negative connotation. So it's more people with more longer standing. So whether it be metabolic, so like diabetes or um, whether it be cancer or whether it be uh, like osteoporosis or just general poor health, um, that's where I come in. Some people are like, oh, how does that differ to a physio? Physios deal more with your uh, musculoskeletal type of conditions where I'm dealing with kind of everything else after that. And prescribing exercise um, is a form of medicine essentially so so yeah i've been doing that now for five years and yeah i love it cool uh that's great um and in terms of who what dem demographic do you work with at the moment uh so primarily demographic um so do a little bit of work with like ndis uh, and dva so i see clients who okay. come from referred from the gp uh so whether it be parkinson's uh depression uh what else we do do i have um uh, MS, um, uh, MND. So there's a few different clientele that I see in that space. Osteoporosis is one that I usually see as well. Uh, I don't see them as long lasting. Um, so it might be for an initial few week period, um, set them up with an exercise program and then they start doing it by themselves where the ones I see week to week are the ones who can't really do it by themselves. And so yeah, I help facilitate that. Yeah. It's more like assisted exercise yeah. in that sense. Yeah. Oh, it's cool. Yeah. And the reason why I got you down here is because you work with the older population, yep. I work with the younger population. So how do we how do we keep people healthy? How do we um, you know keep them you know into like the, I guess their healthy aging? It's like you know where do we begin with something like that? Because you, I guess from your perspective, you see I guess those who really struggle on a daily basis, and you're trying to give them some sort sort of return to function daily function. From our perspective, we work with a lot of youth athletes. You know, it's more of the performance pe perspective, um, you know, achieving state, national level recognition to some of the kids who just want to, you know, bench 100 kilos, whatever it may be, like yourself. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not there just yet, but soon. Um, and 
there seems to be a bit of like a drop off from a lot of the research like as the kids get older physical activity becomes less a priority more becomes about work um but then there seems to be a uh, a consensus that is a bit of a ramp up later on in life so i guess you know what are the, some of the pitfalls for the the older generations when they don't do physical activity um, at an earlier age or be able to maintain it you know, throughout their adulthood. Yeah, and this is something that we spoke about, I think, a few months ago. Um, we, we just were chatting because, yeah, obviously we deal with different ends of the spectrum, but there's, like, there's this whole middle part in, like, your 20s and 30s and 40s where, like, I see a few of those clientele, you would see a few, but the majority on, the, on, the, on, on, on like, each edge. Um, and so it was just a really interesting kind of thing of thinking for myself, well, what are some of the things that I often see, like, some of the pitfalls, as you said, of clientele that come in? And... A lot of the time, uh, a lot of the clientele that I see have done some form of exercise throughout life, but nothing really ever structured. Um, And so, because there's other priorities. So, if you are in your 20s, your career becomes your um, prerogative. So, you want to really progress there. So, that's going to be your number one. Then you progress to having a family. And then you have to look after not just yourself. So you might have a partner and then you might have kids who are you, the clients I usually see, especially mums in particular. So then they come to like last in the list, okay? What then I usually see is post once kids are maybe 16, 17, 18, that mums are coming in. They might have been diagnosed with osteoporosis or they're just looking for some form of structured exercise. Um, and we talk and it's like, well, for so long, I haven't put myself first. Now, in ways, I think... Life is life and we can't, you know, everyone's got different things that come up. But I think if if parents can really do a really strong job in the initial phase with their children to really have them recognise how important exercise is and have it as a routine and understand the value of it, um, that'll set them up so that they don't have to, or the things will come up in their life, but it may be that they still have a baseline routine that they can stick to rather than throwing it away altogether. And so that's kind of what I see. People have got like exercise for a few years, stop for five, exercise, stop, exercise, stop, and there's nothing ever regular. Um, and that can stem, again, I haven't done a full psychoanalysis of each of these people. I'm not a psychologist, but um, whether, you know, you asked if they exercise as a kid, I played a bit of sport, but they were never probably introduced to a gym um, or shown how to exercise correctly or known that, hey, you don't just have to go to your regular gym and walk on a treadmill. Like, there's other things you can do that are fun, engaging. Um, you can get more guidance, like somewhere like here, which I think is awesome, and we can talk about later about how, like, like how great the service you have is um, to help kids develop and, and, and get those skills. But um, I definitely think there's stuff that we can be doing um, for the younger generation um, to help them understand that value early. Because if you can do that, well, yeah, okay, I won't see many clients later in life probably like you're going to take away from a business, but that's kind of cool. Like I don't mind. Like that's that's uh, that's totally fine. Like I want the Australian population to get healthier and I think exercise is somewhere where we can start. I'm really passionate about that as well. Yeah, I think I know from my perspective is, you know, I just see the members here as we're just caretakers. Eventually they're going to move on and that's not a bad thing. Um, to have it from that perspective yes you know we have a business we've got mouths to feed and all that jazz but if we look after them that they can then they're going to be able to better look after themselves and they're going to be able to better look after other people then a lot of these like societal issues that we have whether it's come kind of like the um, the obesity rates the um, I guess more people are being like like sicker it seems to be like just a like general consensus that people are just more sick more, more frequently than ever before um, I think we're going to see less less of those problems especially if they know how to better regulate that regulate that um, and I guess from a school perspective as well when we um, deal with kids you know if we you know with school we're teaching them basic life skills right well we should but sometimes they don't feel like <laughs> they're learning basic skills but we even with the gym right you know we're teaching them how to move properly we're teaching them uh you know how exercise can improve their mood as you mentioned before um about you know depression is a, is a, a strong link between exercise and depression um then the um when we look at health as well so we're looking at you know having um a body fat percentage that's within the healthy range and you know improving bone mineral density especially for females 
um, maintaining or developing and maintaining muscle mass and fast twitch muscle fibers as well. The, co the, the cognition development we get from strength training also. Um, there's a multitude of things that, you know, exercise does, you know, you know, if you could put exercise in a pill, you know, we literally would and it would make, you know, millions and millions of Mate, dollars. I wouldn't have to work ever again oh, no. if I made that. <laughs> yeah, I'm retiring after that. <laughs> but, but unfortunately, exercise is the pill. Mm -hmm. I think that's the kind of the, the not the general consensus, but it's it's becoming a bit more mainstream in that sense that exercise, whether it's you know playing physical physical activity with your kids, structured sport, or even going to the gym, it is the prescription exercise itself is good, but then it comes down to more the specifics of the structure and the prescription of what you're doing specifically to help address and maintain certain qualities throughout the lifespan and the, or even developing it at certain periods when you can. Um, but then if you, for more stressful times of your life, you know, it's not about trying to, you know, cull it and you have to fully go 100% to something else. It's more about the maintenance of these qualities or reducing the decline of certain qualities. Um, you probably would have seen, may have seen this at uni. You know how they have like the comparison of like the, someone in the seventies. They'll have some, someone who's done very little to no exercise, and then they've got so, someone who's a, I think like a marathon runner or a regular uh, someone who's been exercising for a long period of time. And they did like a um, I think it was like an MRI and did like a cross-sectional area of the thigh, and you could see like the the body weight was relatively the same. But when you looked at the MRI and the um, I guess how the percentage of body fat. Um, and body and lean body mass i'm like it's a stark difference so just because they may look healthy on the outside doesn't mean on the inside they're actually functioning as well and unfortunately if we ignore these things it's like if we don't tend to our garden and pull the weeds out and all that jazz it just will it will go to shit unfortunately in this case for some people they eventually they'll have a situation where they're not prepared for they might it might be a crack in the a sidewalk and unfortunately they trip over and then they've got a broken hip and um, we know the history of broken hips as well or the track record with people with broken hips. It's not a good life after that, unfortunately. So it's a real decline when we do try and um, cull it out and we try and go up, down and it makes it even harder to kind of get back into things as well, especially as we age. Things are, we don't function as well um, as we do in our 20s. So in our 20s, we can get away with it and I think in our 30s, 40s, like what your late 20s, I'm in my 30s now. Mm -hmm. Like my my personal goal for myself is just to be able to maintain, if not you know, increase my fitness as much as I can, and just micro dosing it wherever I can and make it work with my current situation. I guess that's the same for you working full time as well. Um, and I think that's going to be the general trend or consensus. But I think there needs to be some sort of way to help people become more educated and more knowledgeable on how they can actually manage it themselves during these high periods of stress or if you've only got access to like, you know, you've got like 500 bucks and you can only invest in like four pieces of equipment and shoved in your garage, what can you do? And a lot of people actually did that during the lockdowns as well. They literally just had a whole bunch of gym equipment and trying to make up some sort of circuit with that. And that, and that would be all fine to actually help you get through those periods of stress where you can't leave your home for whatever reason, looking after your partner or... Um, you know, you've had your first kid and it's stressed out and you've got to be home and your partner's sick and all that jazz to help provide that support. At least you can find ways to have some sort of structure with your physical fitness so then later on down the track, you're not going to be paying the piper later on and that's where the real consequences is and then Tom will be waiting at the door, smiling and waving. It's like, hey, come on in. And it's the last thing you would probably want to want to see is, yep. you know, is your face in that sense of like, oh, blood sugar's high, blood pressure's high, doc told me to come in here. And I, all right, come on. And then you're like, then you feel so defeated because you might be in your 50s or 60s. Then you're like, where the fuck did my life go? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we get clients and they, you know, sometimes you can be quite emotional in the, in the initial consult of being like, it's like a stark realization of, you know, how did I get to this point? But the cool part is, and what I tell them is that you can still make a significant difference at that age as well. Um, and so getting into some structured form of exercise and being consistent with it, no matter what age you at, uh, are at, will get you... Uh, some form of improvement. Now, that level of improvement is dependent on like sex, age, genetics, things like that. The older you get, the harder it is. Um, so that's why I'm a big proponent of these kids learning as much skill as now because they can really increase their baseline and peak out 
in their 20s because uh, we know once we hit our mid-20s that we start to get you know a loss of muscle mass um, et cetera et cetera I'm just kind of learning that now I'm 28 um, but uh, it slowly starts to degrade over there and so if you can start at a higher base that means that as time goes on and things come up at least you're not starting from a lower point and starting to lose it from there so um, the big thing is there's really something's better than nothing and I think what you're talking about there before about you know, people having different avenues so like whether you've got some home equipment doing that while you're in a high stress period and understanding what you can do and what and, and what's beneficial great and then you can return to what you did before you know sometimes people think well everything's too hard I'll just exercise is the first thing that gets cut off and you know really it should be the last thing that gets you know, not the last thing there's a few other things that are important but it's like one of those real core things that should be like your top of your priority list and it's hard to do exercise man like i work in this industry i've been doing this for ages and i still like i come somewhere like here one because it's really good but two like i need that accountability like full-time work is hard i don't even have a kid i've got a dog and that's hard so i don't have a kid so it's you know someone might listen to this go well this guy doesn't have a kid or anything but like i'm in this point in my life where i'm like i need some more accountability and some structure mm. and i do this day in day out um so it's yeah i'm I, like i never want to let people know that it's not hard because it is but you just got to have it as a priority and really understand the importance of it so yeah yeah and i think because my mum trains here she's oh, i'll probably get this wrong i think no she's 60 she's 60, 65 you better get that right yeah 65 my dad's 67 that's the only way i remember <laughs> two years difference um and she's been training since I was probably before I was born, right? She was like the golden era of aerobics. So she was um she used to be an aerobics instructor. So she's done fitness all her life, played I think she played netball, did a little bit of swimming, and then she used to be a postie in the area as well. So she'll be on the bike. Didn't know that. Yeah, there you go. Um and she's always been physically active in in um yeah, with her with her life. Um and even now she trains, you know, six six days a week or she does proper training or strength work four days a week does one day of car uh, conditioning then she'll do two sessions of uh, swimming and that swimming could be like 20 to 30 minutes nice nice and light nice and easy on the weekends um and when you like she's like still sharp as a tack like mentally as well um you know, moves from relatively good weight. You know, if I go to the trap bar deadlift with body weight, you know, we should be able to do that. She can bench press at least half her body weight. And what does that really mean for her at the end of the day? Is number one, she remains independent. Number two, she gets to do the things that she loves. You know, she's got two dogs, you know, Bo and Luna, and, you know, little yappers that come down and train here. But she walks them like two to three times a day. She literally loves doing that. Um, and then fitness is, has become a real big part of her life and she's maintained you know, some good you know, muscle mass and definition that she really likes and sometimes flexes as well. <laughs> um, and then, then you see, kind of see like, I, I guess, I don't know, I'm sh- it sounds like I'm shooting down society, but then you see some people in their 50s, even 40s, it's almost like, what happened to you? You know, you let yourself go. And then the problem is though, it just be paying the price in the sh- in the short term with your health and fitness, and just getting up and going for a walk, or you know, getting in the garage gym for twenty minutes and just bang out two sets of max reps of squats and dips or whatever it may be, right? You're not going to see the positive output of that. It's kind of like making a deposit into the bank and you know, seeing that compound interest. Or you won't see it till later on down the track in terms of results, right? If we did you know go train and everyone blew up we wouldn't even be here because everyone would be fit and healthy mm-hmm. right but the problem is though a majority of people a majority of um, i guess society especially you know 40s 50s 60s you know whether it's because of you know the kids and work and other commitments they've got to really get to like you mentioned before they put themselves in the back burner and that's why you know when you start them young you get them to understand what physical fitness is about and provide that education i guess a physical fitness IQ essentially mm-hmm. um, and then they're going to find ways to be able to maintain that that's why I like sports like um, tennis and triathlon are actually re- relatively good or even running and cycling because you know anyone can jump on a bike and just you know ride up and down you know beach road you know for, for 20 minutes to two hours um, doesn't take much thinking you get relative the intensity can be quite high or how hard you make it but you can maintain your fitness 
um, th through that way, you know, three, four times a week. You don't have to think about it. And it's really when you've developed that knowledge, you don't have to think too much about it as well, um, especially when those periods are high stress and there's a lot of things where you put your energy into. Just maintain it. When things start to settle down or you start to become more on, in control of things, that's when you can kind of like, all right, you can start to double down and be like, all right, I need some help. I want to really improve my fitness when those periods do come up. Yeah, yeah, and I like. I think, you know, you like like you said, putting it in the in like like in the bank. You know, exercise. A thing I tell clients is, you know, you want to exercise when you don't need to exercise. If if that makes sense, like you don't want to have to wait until you have to do some form of rehab because then, not that it's too late, but you're already starting from a position behind. Where exercise, you want it to be more of a preventative approach, okay? And that's what I talk to the clients about. Um, it's like brushing your teeth. You're not going to just brush your teeth the day after you've been told by the dentist that you've got two fillings or that you need to have two fillings. Like you need to be brushing your teeth day in, day out before that to prevent the fillings from occurring. So mm. exercise is no different to say brushing your teeth for just for your overall health. Now everyone brushes their teeth, teeth twice a day. Uh, well, they should because they know that it's beneficial. Now that's a really easy thing to do because you go and you do it in the morning and you do it at night. But it's structured, it's a practice. It's probably something that, that their parents have instilled in them and then they go ahead and do it. Exercise really could be the exact same thing in terms of if the kids are learning from... Because kids will really mirror what their parents do. Um, and so if you can have a situation where kids are exposed to some form of exercise, whether it be some team sport, regular activity, whether it's like walks or um, even coming to a gym like this and putting you know someone with skills like as yourself to help someone get comfortable in this setting, kids will then be like, all right, cool, I need to do this to look after my body. They might not fully understand the value, like because they're kids, they don't, you know, they're not really gonna have any injuries or feel old or wake up sore or anything like that. And become like they're brushing, like brushing your teeth for them, and they have those skills now. And I think what you just said there, like exercise IQ or physical activity IQ, is a really good way of thinking. If you can increase someone's IQ and understand the importance of the activity, it'll waver in their life. Like it'll be times where they do it and times where they, where they don't, but at least understand that there's a value to it, and so they'll strive to try and do it versus if you haven't been exposed to it and you don't really see the value of it, well, then why would you do it? And mm. that's what and that's what I think happens to a lot of individuals I see is they're healthy, as you said, in their 20s, they're going okay, they played a bit of sport in their teens, so they're okay, or they might not have, and then they come in their 30s, 40s, 50s because they've, been, they've noticed something. And so, yeah, trying to really do it when you don't have to, I think is, is the key to success. And the key to success is then letting kids know at an early age the importance of physical activity. Keep an eye out on the second installment of our conversation. If you want to stay updated on the latest episodes, make sure to subscribe to Inner Athlete on both YouTube and Spotify.